In this video, we're going to look for patterns with integers. We're going to start with addition. Think of it as I have two integers I want to add together, and there's a lot of different possibilities here with one of those numbers being positive, the other being negative, and also which one is larger. So for example, if you think of um, positive 3 plus negative 5, I'm going to give you two ways to visualize this. One is with a number line. So if you imagine that positive 3 is right here, we're starting with positive 3 and we need to add negative 5. Adding negative 5 is going in the reverse direction of what we normally do when we add. It's like subtracting 5. So if we go backwards 5 units from 3, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, we land at negative 2. So the answer is negative 2. Another way to visualize 3 plus negative 5 is with positive and negative units. So if we say that 3 is made of 3 positive units because it's positive 3, then negative 5 would be equal to 5 negative units. If you line them up this way, here's what I want you to know. A positive unit plus a negative unit is equal to zero because they wipe each other out. So if we collect all the ones that are equal to zero, the quantity is zero for all three of those combined. Just look at what's left over. Two negative units, so the answer is negative two. This is a helpful model just to keep in mind. I don't expect you to work things out this way as numbers get larger and larger, but if you can visualize this comparison when you're combining positives and negatives, that many of the units are canceling each other out and leaving zero, you're really looking for what the excess is. Here's another example. What if the 3 was negative and the 5 was positive? So in this situation, if we were to draw it on a number line, Our original amount is negative 3, so we're going to start over at negative 3. And we need to add positive 5 units to that. So we're going to go in this direction this time. 5 units. Let's see how far that takes us. So we go 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and that leaves us at positive 2, so the answer is positive 2. Using my other model, I have three negative units compared with five positive units. So if you line them up like this, here's a zero, here's a zero, and here's a zero. What's left is positive two. So in both of these models we have positive two left. And as I said, when numbers get bigger I want you to visualize one of these two models, whichever one makes more sense to you. Now what if they're both negative? So if we add negative 3 plus negative 5, if we use our number line model, I'm going to put the negative 3 right here so I don't run out of space. Adding negative 5 is like subtracting 5. It goes in this direction. So starting at negative 3, we then go 5 more units to the left. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. So from negative 3, we would go to negative 4, negative 5, negative 6, negative 7, negative 8. So the answer would be negative 8. Or if you look at the other model, you have 3 negative units, no positive units, 5 more negative units. So there is no canceling out. It all combines into one big negative, which is negative 8 either way. And that's how addition works. So if you look for a pattern here, what students quickly notice is that when the signs are different in either of these cases, we ended up with 2, although we have negative 2 here and positive 2 here. So when one is positive and one is negative, it's like subtract, subtracting because they're going in opposite directions, so we're really looking for the difference between them. The excess, which gives us the answer, comes from the larger number if you look at the absolute value. Five 
is five units. It has more units in it than three, and so the extra is coming from that negative five, so the answer is negative two. In this one, the number with more units is the positive five, and so the answer is positive two, because that's where those extra two units came from. They came from a positive number. When both numbers are negative, you combine them into one bigger negative amount. Another model that's popular is thinking about it as a bank account. In three plus negative five, that's as if you have three dollars and you spend five. Well, the first three that you spend take you back to a zero balance. The next two that you spent put you in debt. So negative two for an answer is like owing two. In the second example, it's as if you start owing three. The f when you add five to that, the first three dollars would fill the hole and you do back to zero. The next two dollars are is money that you actually get to keep and save in your account. So you end up with two dollars in your account. When you have two negatives, it's as if you start by owing three and then you somehow accidentally spend five more, which puts you in debt eight dollars altogether. Those are all good models for addition of integers and we spend a lot of time with addition. In fact, we change most subtraction problems into addition problems, so these models are very important. Let's talk about subtraction. So in the case where we have something minus something else, either or both of these could be negative numbers, so we're going to look at those situations. Let's say we have negative seven, take away, positive two. What I want you to do is right away learn that you can change subtraction into adding negatives. Remember how in the previous examples when we added a negative number it was just like taking away that amount. And so we're going to get used to this. All the way through algebra when we see subtraction we generally change it to addition of the opposite number. Now that it's negative seven plus negative two, think of your previous models. We collect them into one big negative amount. That's negative nine. Okay. What if I had positive seven take away negative two? Again, I want to change this to an addition problem. Subtraction is like adding the opposite of the number. So subtracting a negative number is really the same as adding. This is like seven plus two, which is positive nine. Now what if they're both negative to start with and it's subtraction? So if we had negative seven minus a negative two, what would that be? Well, if we change it to add the opposite, this turns into negative seven plus a positive two. This is like I owe seven dollars right now. I have less than zero money. I put two dollars in the bank. What's my status? Well, it helped, but I'm still in debt, right? I still owe five, and that's what the answer is. So in this case, it turned into a positive and a negative. We find the difference, and the sign, the negative, came from seven being more units than two, and seven was negative. So in subtraction in general, we want you to change that to add the opposite, and then you just go back to all of your models for addition. For multiplication, let's say we've got an integer times for multiplication let's say we've got an integer times another integer so either or both could be negative one concept of multiplication that's a model that I think really helps is remembering that multiplication can always be changed to the word of if you think of it as three times negative two is like three copies of negative two, that means I have a negative two and I have another negative two and I have another negative two and I am adding them all together. I'm just combining all these negative twos 
and all together that just keeps going in a negative direction it's negative six altogether so when we have a positive number times a negative number we're just making this many copies of that negative number and combining them all together in one big negative so a positive times a negative is a negative answer if we switch those around you might wonder what's the model for a negative number times a positive number well again it's like making copies but negative copies are like opposite copies so think three opposite copies of two so again it's like negative two plus a negative two plus a negative two and the result is the same so in multiplication it does not matter which number is has a larger amount of units in it if either number is negative but only one of them then the answer is negative if we multiply a negative times another negative what does that mean well using my previous model negative three of negative twos means I have three opposite copies of negative two the opposite of negative two is positive two so I have three positive twos added together which makes a positive six the pattern is when you multiply a negative times another negative you take the opposite of all the negatives and so it turns positive so a negative times a negative is a positive be careful not to over apply this rule to addition division follows the same rules as multiplication so if we have a number divided by another number and their integers we don't usually use the division sign at this point although you can um, we usually just transform them right away into a fraction so for example 6 divided by negative 2 can be written as 6 over negative 2 if you think of negative 2 as negative 1 times positive 2 which it is equal to then you can think of it as 6 over negative 1 times 2 let's do some reducing here we can reduce 2 from both of these and now we have 3 divided by negative 1 3 divided by negative 1 is actually negative 3 so that's like 6 divided by 2 but because one of them was a negative the answer is negative let's talk about that pattern some more when we have a negative in a fraction situation which is the same as in division think of this background information and look at the properties of negative 1 negative 1 can be rewritten as a couple of division problems it is the same as negative 1 over 1 but it's also the same as 1 divided by negative 1 if you apply this to other negative fractions you'll see that when there is one negative in a division problem or in a fraction it's a negative number so if we see negative three-fifths that's the same as either negative three-fifths or negative three divided by five or three divided by negative five in a final answer we generally move the negative to the top or out in front but all three of these forms are equal to each other what if we have negative seven divided by negative two you can think of this as negative seven divided by negative two as a fraction now just like in multiplication when you have two negatives in the problem they actually cancel each other out and that is the same as seven over two it's also the same as three and a half but it isn't generally useful to change things to mixed numbers in an algebra class because then it's not ready for multiplying or dividing and it's just kind of a waste of time that's a lot of information to take in in one video but it's a critical topic and my goal is for you to feel intuitive about operations with integers so hopefully you're seeing the patterns the more examples you do the more this is going to make sense so see if you can go make up some on your own 
have fun with that.